and welcome to the Dublin Arsenal podcast. I'm your host, as always, Jonathan Giles. It's Monday, the 24th of April. I'm joined by my seasonal guest, um, <laughs> Mr. Meltdown himself, Craig Smith. How are you? Where are you? <laughs> Mr. Four Nail on Friday night. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to say as well, I don't want to throw Craig under the bus. I predicted 2 1, so I was, we were all wrong. <laughs> uh, Mr. Meltdown 2 in Gunnery, how are you? <laughs> always, always good, always good. <laughs> I didn't make a prediction because I was always just fine. <laughs> he, he's a lot happier everyone uh, that listens because he hasn't made, had to, had, didn't have to make a donation to the Dublin Earth or two. Was I was, broke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was his mm. chicken roll gone from the last donation. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also joined by um, Martin Stoneville, host of uh, Beyond the Last Man. How are you, Martin? And welcome back. N- not too bad. We're just taking the next two days, you know, like to calm down and then see what's going to happen on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, um, Martin's here. Uh, a bit messy tonight, so he's going to go for a zero all over. If he went away. Mr. Manninger himself he looks more like messing mm-hmm. hootle every day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Of course, the um, our usual uh, guest, uh, Eamon Donnelly, can make his. Uh, this week he's on an observing his course uh, with the Samaritans. <laughs> Five days of it is. He should be all right for touristy show, he said. So <laughs> we'd have to make do with uh, the three amigos here. <laughs> um, as always, you can catch a show on the uh, <clears throat> Dublin Arsenal YouTube channel, uh, Spotify, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok and Facebook. Uh, check out our sister show, uh, Beyond the Last Man, with Martin himself. Um, Martin, is there a show coming up soon, do you know her? Well, I'm, I'm, look, I'm, str- I'm struggling enough like to put this show on the road, like so I have so much other things to do. <laughs> so uh, we we we're trying, you know, but obviously, like with with, with the result of um, last uh, on Sunday, like the girls played to all against Wolfsburg, and then I think there's a the, the game on Monday, on the first of May, is uh, the one. So like I'm hoping that we're gonna do a show before or after that. I'm actually going over to London on Saturday just to just to see like an empty Emirates Stadium because we got shafted with the Chelsea tickets. So um, I'm not sure where I'm gonna where I'm gonna bring all this 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 stuff into it. Yeah, yeah. So but we, we we try anyway. And with you know like with with Arsenal playing now as well on Wednesday, it's just gonna be tough like not to, you know, disturbing your podcast. So like I have to put a lot of effort into that as well. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I can hear a P45 whistling in, in my ear. <laughs> uh, yes, it's because it's called Beyond the Last Man for a reason. <laughs> uh, it actually beyond, yeah. beyond, beyond the last show, more like <laughs> right. Uh, with the insults out of the way, I'd like to thank, as usual, our sponsor, Brandon Sports Direct. They do a great range of um Irish gear. Um, uh, Craig will sport it there for us. Have you got the yeah, nice, yeah. nice one? Yeah, as you can see there, it's t- top stuff. He won that in um, a recent raffle. And uh, Martin has the um, tip through. Yeah, the tip top through, yeah. um, it's, well worth, uh, it's well worth looking at the site um, as well. Yeah, so thanks to them. Uh, check out our friends at JoeStarsa.com. Uh, Papa Glocklin and Co. are doing a great job on their one as well. So give them a look. Um, I think they're well over a thousand um, <coughs> subscribers now. So well done to them. Uh, yeah. But just, just keep listening to us, obviously. <laughs> Uh, Pat McLaughlin, are you listening? <laughs> uh, and check out <laughs> all the matches in the official supporters bar, the River Bar in uh, Dublin City Centre, which we hope will be packed come after Wednesday night if the title race isn't, isn't over. So keep going to us there. Um, yeah. Last week, stats, lads, uh, 74 views, uh, four likes and uh, 2,000 uh, 890 subscribers. I think that's up uh, 10 on last week. Um, happy days, Martin, isn't it? Going steady. Yeah. yeah, like look, we're we're nearly at the three thousand mark. So if you beat yeah. City on Wednesday, we're gonna <laughs> say we're gonna go you through it. <laughs> so we probably next week we're still gonna be in the same same mark. If <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Is> that lower. <laughs> But, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 steadily going to the three thousand, and so like yeah. I think we're gonna crack that by the end of the season. So. <laughs> I like your optimism, like we're gonna win the league. Uh, no, I, th- I think we're going really well at the moment. Um, as like as we said before the start of the season, I don't think we were even really near a thousand. So not even a thousand, yeah. So yeah. yeah. It really has gone really from centre to end. Thanks to Martin, uh, um, as always, you know, for the content you put up as well. Um, you know, it's re- really has um, 
it's really bumped us up. So um, well done to all in here and thanks to all the people that check us out week in, week out. Um, on this week's show, <coughs> we'll be reviewing the uh, three all draw at home to Southampton on Friday night past. Uh, previewing uh, Man City's fixture against Man City, um, which is on BT Sport at 8 o'clock. Um, I suppose uh, straight into the review. So, uh, <coughs> from Friday night's match, uh, three all against Southampton. Um, <coughs> goals from um, Martinelli, Odegaard, and Saka for ourselves. Uh, and for Southampton was um, Alcaraz, Walcott, which I did say last week that every ex player comes back to hand us, and he did. He hasn't scored in about a year, I think. And uh, Khalid Asar scored for um, the tour for Southampton. Um, uh, I suppose really the main points I've taken down that's um, really was from the get go really wasn't it like similar to Bournemouth um, Ramsey's misplaced pass really just I don't know what he was thinking I think he should have just just put it up the park you know and look in fairness to Alcaraz he was cleverly hit behind Gabriel saw what he was doing and he took the ball and re it and I have to say I was really impressed with him they, they have a good young side with Hampton haven't they um, I thought Lavi in the middle for them Done, done really well as well on the night he, he got caused party a lot of problems but I think Granite Jack was a big loss in the centre of midfield in my, in my opinion um, <clears throat> the second goal <clears throat> party was displaced again um, Lavia put it through to Alcaraz and Alcaraz ball to Walka was like in the old days wasn't it for when he played for the Arts he slotted it home beautifully Gabriel just wasn't really watching over his shoulder but he took off with some pace like the walk out of old and he, he took his goal in fairness well and I think a 2-0 I think it was just, just pure shock um, uh, Zinchenko called for a huddle which was quite <laughs> a bit bizarre I know Odegaard was looking at him and just says would you just do your job there mate but um, no it was nice to see Zinchenko's passion though you know he's got real passion for the club and it was nice to see and it kind of did rally us because um, we got the fours goal back then from Odegaard sent Saka down the wing and his ball across was met first time by Martinelli and the volley in the cracking goal. No chance for Bazunu. Uh, so second half, um, you could see Southampton worked on the training ground, the corner, couldn't you? The flick on at the near post onto um, Khalid Sir and he barely did it. But was poor marking as well, in fairness. Um, Jesus put over then shortly after from Martinelli's su- uh, super cross in. He just... Nine times out of ten, he would have scored that, but it was just really what was happening on the night for us. And then, um, the two late goals I thought, um, <clears throat> Odegaard was brilliant in the second half. He really grabbed the team, you know, by the scruff of the neck at times, uh, buried the shot into presuming his right hand post. Great finish. Um, and then it was the onslaught end, which I, which I expected from us. Um, Nelson shot was parried by Bazunu and Saka Berry just. And then um, I thought Trossard shot <laughs> at the very end was going to dip in, but before she hit the crossbar and it was one of those nights. But great to see the passion there when we went 3-1 down to keep going, you know, because other season we would have just dropped our head and maybe that would have been a defeat. So, look, three draws now, uh, Liverpool, West Ham and Southampton Friday night. <sighs> it's just good. Um, we say top with 75 points. <laughs> Five clear City. Um, we get on to City preview because <laughs> I'm dreading that game. But I'll go to Craig. You're at the match uh, Friday night. Your take on the match, Craig? Yeah, I'm a little lost for words. I don't, don't really know where to start. To be honest with you, um, <laughs> one of them games. Um, obviously going into the game, I predicted a four and and how how wrong was I? Um, but uh, yeah, no. Look, you know, starting off, I think it was what thirty seconds in that Alcaraz scored. Um. Yeah, it was a poor pass by uh, Ramsey. I think he was going for the the harder ball into Zinchenko in the middle when he had Rob Holden and Gabriel either side of him, but he could have pa- passed to them. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not it's not Ramsey's first first mistake this season, but look, he's been he's been unbelievable um, this year. And look, with the way we play, I think there's always going to be a mistake like that. You know, look at the Gaia last uh, last weekend, Sevilla. You know, um, to be fair to Ramsey, he doesn't make an awful lot of them their mistakes. So. Um, we, we, I think we can let that one slide. Um, I, th- I think then even even when they got the first goal, I think you know Ramsdale probably could have saved that sh- that shot. I don't think he was set properly, but um, it was a real killer blow that first goal because I think especially drawing the last two games, we needed a, you know kind of quick start and 
once they got one in over 30 seconds, you know, the game plan, yeah, probably the try blow them away in the first 15, 20 minutes that we've done a lot this season is kind of gone out the windows, you know, and um, they just sit deep, sit deep then and they kind of just defended for the whole first half. Um, and then obviously, I think it was, I think it was Odegaard's misplaced pass, am I correct, for the second goal? Party. Was a party or all the guys? Yeah, party. Yeah, party. 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 yeah, party guy. Party. Yeah, happy. Yeah. yeah, look, that's two weeks in a row now. Party's been yeah off form. Um, I don't know what's going on there. Um, yeah, he was very poor again this game. I don't know if there's. Uh, I think someone has suggested or I read somewhere that uh, he's actually injured, and they're actually trying to manage him through the games because. Obviously, there's only five or six games left now. Um, yeah, yeah. But I think he might be carrying a bit of a knock because it's definitely affected his performances the last two weeks. Um, in particular, I think Kent West Ham and this game was, was quite poor. Um, you know, in saying that, he was missing Jacket. I think in this game, you know, yeah, we probably all give out about Jacket over the last few years, but um, we really did miss him this in this game. We thought in particular because he's just that bit more experience on the pitch and. You know, he knows what position to kind of to stay in. Whereas um, Fabio Vieira, I don't think he's ready for, you know, the first team at the moment. Um, he, he showed, you know, in parts that he's a good player, but I, I just, I thought this game kind of passed him by. I thought when we went down 2-0, you know, it was kind of, I was watching him in the middle of the park, he was kind of hiding behind players. I wasn't showing for the ball as much as Jacka would say. Um, so it, I was, I was kind of surprised to see him start. I thought Trossard, Trossard might actually start there. Um, yeah. And I think we kind of could have started Trossard. Sorry, just the dog. Um, <laughs> I thought we could have started Trossard there. Um, especially with... Um, especially with Kent's Hampton at home, you know. Um, yeah. I thought we could have we could have kind of took a risk there. I thought we kind of knew what Pierre could probably do there. Um It must be a Southampton fan, Craig. You see the servants like that. <laughs> Pete, 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 Pete. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry about that. But, a few um, ducky biscuits in. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I, I think Trossard definitely should have started the game because yeah, he it, yeah. you know he's, he's been great the last few games. He hasn't really played yeah. that much. Um, yeah. He hasn't started the last two, and I thought he should have come back in for this, especially because uh, Jack was out. Yeah, but um, yeah. look. Yeah. The second, the, the goal that we got um, was a great finish by Martinelli, but kind of after that second half, I was surprised to see Vieira still on the pitch. Um, and then they went 3-1 up, you know, was poor defending. Look, I'm going to have a bit of a rant here. Rob Holden is not good enough for Arsenal. He shouldn't be at the club still. It's two years in a row he's cost us. You know, he cost us last year against Spurs in Newcastle, and I thought he was very poor this game. You know, I, I watched him again in particular. Just every time he has the ball, he has five, six, seven or eight touches. Now, I understand that he's the fourth, probably the fourth choice at the half. But the, the, in terms of quality from him and to Saliba, there's just there's no comparison. You know, he, I just I, I, what I noticed in particular for the tactics in this game, Southampton let Rob Holden have the ball and didn't press him at all. Whereas if Gabriel had the ball, they were pressing him because, you know, he can pick a pass out. Yeah. So Southampton were happy, happy enough for... Holding half the ball, ball yeah. you know, in this game, and it's going to be the exact same on Wednesday if Holden plays. No, I hope he doesn't. You know, I'm sure Holden is a good guy, and you know he, he's done well for Arsenal over the last few years. But I think the squad has outgrown him. I think I mentioned this last week that I think Arsenal have become better than the player he is. You know, I think Rob Holden would have a great career in the Premier League, but maybe at a you know a mid-table club. I just yeah. think that yeah. for the standard we're playing at, you know. Look, put it this way, Arteta didn't trust him against Sporting Lisbon. And that's why Saliba probably got his injury from, you know, I don't know, overplaying or... Yeah, does, you know, yeah. That kind of just shows you that. Yeah. Arteta probably doesn't trust him. We probably don't have a lot of options there, but in saying that, I think there is options there. I think you can maybe take, play Tierney right back, you know, or you could bring... I'm not sure about Kiri or, or even Tierney to play centre-half as well. I know two, two left foot centre-halves probably aren't going to play there, but I think there is options if you want to take Rob Holden out, because I think now the last two games he has really struggled and I think he needs to take another fire line for Wednesday. I'm sure we'll go on to Wednesday in a few minutes, but um, look, 
it was good to get you know the draw in the end. We never kind of gave up. We never said oh yeah, attitude. But looking back now, it was a really really poor result against the. I know you're saying it's a young Southampton side. I'm sure they will be good in a few years. And the manager Ruben Sellers seems like a good, decent manager. But you know, if you're going to win the league, you need to be beating the table, the, the team that's bottom bottom of the table. Yeah, they looked. I don't know about you, but when I looked at the highlights again, Southampton looked a bit hungrier than us at the start, didn't they? They were in our faces. Well, well I, I, I said that in the pub, like, sorry that I'm jumping in here, but yeah, go I, ahead, I think, like, like, if you look at the bottom of the table, Southampton, if they would have won, they would have been nearly out of the bottom, bottom three. So, yeah. All of these teams are fighting, and you can't say that Southampton is a bad team. No team in the Premier League is a team. Like, they have, what, 27 points? You know, that's probably a, a, a lot more points than we had, like, the last couple of weeks. So, it's not surprisingly that they are fighting, none of the teams, and there's going to be a few teams that are going to fight for their lives in the next couple of weeks, as well as Leeds and, and Everton against City. So, we can't just take go, go there and 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 think that they're going to roll over because yeah. it's not. If they would have had 10 points and would have been last bottom of the team and they wouldn't have nothing to play for, I think it would have been a different story and there would have been a thing. Of course, we should go to the, the bottom teams and actually roll them over. But I, I just think it's the inexperience of the, the young team, what we have now, is like that the pressure is mounting to them. They're obviously not going to say that. But they're 21, 22 years old. But all fairness to, to Southampton, they changed manager, you know, they tried. They Sometimes we are very unlucky to actually where they are because, like, they have good players. You have Ward Prowse. They have so many really, really good players, but they are just on the bottom, and they will come out and fight. And I think sometimes it's a kind of like, for me, it feels like that Arsenal when they, you know, like when we started against Liverpool, we started against West Ham, like a train, and then all of a sudden we were two 0 up, and it's kind of like we're just relaxing. And I think that might be the inexperience that we don't put them games to bed. But against Southampton, we just didn't even turn up. So yeah. it's it's kind of like, you know, like saying it's only Southampton. They're only Southampton, but they're still not a bad team and they're fighting for their lives and they're still not out. They still have a chance to get out of the drop. And uh, there's a lot of teams like they're going to play and whoever we're going to play. I know we're worried about Man City and, and of course we are. We're worried about Newcastle and Brighton, but we also have to be worried about the other teams, you know, who are fighting for relegation and nobody wants to drop it. And, and that's for me is one of the main points. But look... Uh, it is a game like, you know, like, you know, you're expecting to win and we all thought like, oh, like we have to put a goal difference, you know, like, you know, like make it better looking when we already are. But that's the Premier League. There's no easy games. There's no easy games we can play. And it, it just looked like we kind of underestimated them. But I don't know if that's the case or not. Well, yeah. I, I agree with everything you said there, Martin. Just, uh, <clears throat> I do think, you know, whether I haven't finished the three, bottom or bottom, you know, three to get relegated yeah. or not. Two two points from Southampton is really poor return this year. Ah, you know? yeah. Like, don't, don't get me wrong. Like, that that is not a you know. <laughs> we always saying like you know if you want to win the Premier League, you know this is like and and an, you shouldn't have that kind of drops. I I totally understand yeah. that. But again, I don't think we should be there at the moment to win the Premier League. That's not in our thing. But I'm not saying like, but you can't go into a game like Southampton expecting you're going to roll them over four or five yeah. nil. It yeah. just doesn't work. And that's exactly what it looked like. Ramsdale wasn't on the pitch. He made yeah. a stupid pass, you know, they're just too much relaxed. Yeah. And it's kind of like, if you look actually for me, like the the last, well, the Liverpool and the, and the West Ham game were carbon copies and the um, Southampton game and the Bournemouth game were carbon copies. We got down very early. We kind of like in against the Bournemouth thing, it took us well. And then, you know, they came up and then they scored the, the, the second goal with a header, exactly like what we scored the third goal against Southampton, or they scored in, in Southampton. And then we came back and... Thank God, like against Bournemouth, like you know, we actually kind of turned around and scored a, a mysterious winner in, in 98 minutes, <laughs> which was which was great. And to be fair, we could have done exactly the same. Now it's just one more goal extra to it because we went two one down, yeah. and uh, we we went for it. They came up three one. We scored. We equalized, and then in the last minute, Trossard hit the bar. If that goal would have gone in, like the the Emirates would have erupted and we probably wouldn't have said much about it. But it just seems to be we're not learning from our mistakes. And is that like because the Unexperienced like team and like, a young team, I don't know. But the same with Liverpool. Like we, we went up 2 0 you know, and it was a carbon copy, a stupid mistake, let them back in. Um, we got a penalty against West Ham, exactly the same, and then we just didn't put that to bed. And then what I found is, and even like against Southampton, and I think I said it to a uh, I think I said it to Ian in the pub, it's like we were 2 0 down after what 15 minutes, 20 minutes? 
Yeah, I think so. And we, we, we scored a goal and actually we, sh- we basically seen that this is a superior team against Southampton. We have the man who can play a ball like Saka and Martinelli scored a goal. But when we played and we had the ball, it looked like all over the shop. They were frantic. Like, lads, we have a whole full half time and like 20 mm. minutes in the first half just to, to get that second goal. But we were running around like we were actually trying to push for the, the, the two all or even to win the mm. first half. And that is like, I don't know if there's inexperience, but like it's just nerves. I really think it's just like they didn't want to be down. I, I totally understand that. But the franticness of the thing, and we tried like to play that super ball and like trick and whatever, like it, it just didn't look, I don't know, like when we look back at the games, we really, really played well. You know, there was like one ball, one touch, one, one thing for it. And, and that kind of didn't happen. And I, I, I don't know, it's just kind of, I really put that down to nerves. And it's like the pressure is getting them. And, and I don't know, like... I can't even remember when I was 21 what it must be like, you know. But when you're in that 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 thing now and you you're leading a, a team for you know like hopefully like Premier League glory, like you know the pressure has to be immense on on some young players like that. So look, okay, it's not all to blame on nerves, but it, it's just we, we're making too many mistakes too often at the same time, and and uh, that shouldn't happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, as Craig says, Southampton are the only team to have taken points off us. Home and away this season, yeah. which, also, which also shows what a, what a great season we've had ourselves, you know. And look, t- testament to Southampton, they went there and thought they could get something, and they did. But it was just, I think we did miss yeah. Gran- Granit Xhaka like, was my, a big loss, though. Yeah, my my, and and, and coming back to to Granit Xhaka missing, I I found it very strange, and I said that to Ian as well <laughs> in the pub. I don't understand this. Like when you missing Granit Xhaka, and in fairness, Granit Xhaka is playing well because he had Sinchenko behind him. Yeah. And party thing, so that that triangle worked really well. Yeah, Sin- Sinchenko plays basically where Xhaka played normally. So why wouldn't you just put Tierney in the back and put instead of Vieira, put Sinchenko next to party? I think there would have been a much more, you know, like because I didn't think that we we would have to play Trossard as well, like with all the other ones. If you know, I mean, I, I would like to see Trossard, but unfortunately, we can only play eleven players. But um, I would have thought it would have been a much better solution. To have Tien in the back, give him a bit in. Because one of the big problems with holding is that if you not only missing, like uh, you're a, a, a lesser player than Saliba would be, so then you have Sinchenko not not defending either because that's the least amount he does. He doesn't defend. So all of a sudden, like you're a back three with like White who's going forward as well. So then you're just left with holding and Gabriel, and them two are not playing as well together as Saliba and Gabriel did. So. Just put the extra man in the back, put Sinchenko in the role where he's anyway, and I think it would have been a much more easy thing. And if then, you know, you go up, like, just put uh, Trossard in uh, instead of Martinelli, give him a bit of a rest or whatever. But I just thought, like, it, it was... Uh, Vieira is not there yet. He needs. He probably needed a, a loan, you know, he probably needs a loan next year just to bulk up uh, yeah. and, and to understand the Premier League. And, yeah, look, it, it just didn't look as smooth. And, and Sinchenko, as I said... He's a great player. He he plays everywhere beside outside where he's supposed to be. He's Can I just make a point? Just, just, yeah, like, come on. just the Zinchenko thing. Um look, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and start, you know, blaming the manager at my that. But I, I just want to make a point. I think over the last three games, particularly, I think the manager has shown has shown his inexperience. Yeah. With the, with the substitutions, and I think whether you're gonna estimate Southampton or not, I'm not sure. But I I think there's there's definitely people in the squad there that he could be using or a different formation that he could have used, particularly yeah. maybe against West Ham and Southampton to offset the Saliba, you know, Saliba missing because Saliba is a huge player for us. I think yeah. his importance to us is, is probably underestimated. And I think the last few games have showed it. But I I think even going into Wednesday, I would probably go to a back five. You know, I don't know where you disagree with me or not. I just I just yeah. I don't feel comfortable with holding playing again on Wednesday because if he does play, I just think that's the game gone completely. If he doesn't play, I think we've a chance of getting a draw or may possibly a win, you know, if we counter attack them. But I, I I don't know. I don't want to sit here and hammer hot Rob Holden anyways, but No, no, I and I don't think so. But the only problem is is exactly what we did last year. And again, we're talking about copies. Like last year we actually lost out to a top four because like our defenders got injured and we had to play people at roles they never played in like you know yeah. Tierney was out um thing is and the one 
And it sounds so silly, but because Saliba is out, like, you know, that means Ramsdale has to work more than he normally does, right? Party has to work more than he normally does because he has to go back more, you know, like to protect a bit more what's going in the back. And it just, it's all kind of unsettled. So that's why I think, like, if you would have put Tierney in there and keep it solid in the back, because you're already weakened with holding in the middle. Not that he's mm -hmm. a bad player, but he's not as good as the other one is, as Saliba is. And yeah. then put Sinchenko in the role where he's playing anyway. I think there would have been a much more stable base of that. It would give the, the back four a bit more thing. And look, if you're 3-0 up, then you can change whatever you want. But like, we didn't, you know? And mm -hmm. uh, we conceded stupid goals, you know? And, and then we just kind of like, as I said, like running around like Benny Hill in the middle of the park, like, and then trying to score that extra super just, goal. And it just didn't yeah. work. Yeah, just the shot at the very end from Party was ridiculous as well, wasn't it? Yeah, like you know, uh, yeah, you know, no, he, he was never done to score from that distance, but yeah, um, yeah, it's it's um, going back to you, Craig, who, who would have been um, your man of the match for the Arsenal in that game? Um, man of the match, I would probably say Martinelli. Yeah, it's good, showed, yeah, his balls into the box were very good, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, another good game from him, yeah, um, Odegaard probably would have been mine. You know, he got to the air by his scruff of the neck. It's definitely in the second half, yeah. Um, <coughs> sorry, uh, Martin, who stood out for yourself on um, Friday night? Walcott. <laughs> <laughs> God, that really, no. says, that really says everything. <laughs> no, no. Like, like, I know, yeah, just swear. because you managed to murder on of the season doesn't mean anything. <laughs> 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 no, like, look, uh, as, as I think really, like, you know, Odegaard is just, uh, you know, he he's the one who, like, uh, as much as I liked what, what Sinchenko did, you know, like, put everybody together, but that's that's Odegaard's job, you know, yeah. and I think even, like, when you watch the replay, like, he went over to him after the, everything happened and said, listen, that's my job, like, you know, do what you do, go and defend, because if he would have defended, probably we wouldn't have got them goals, but anyway, um, yeah, for me, Odegaard. Yeah, good you, yeah. Um, Ian, you've been waiting on the bench there for a while. Um, how did you, what did you make of the game on Friday? <laughs> yeah, uh, like, look, I mean, I'm going to try not, I suppose, repeat what Craig Martin has said, but, like, look, we didn't turn up. I think we can safely say that. Like, uh, it's unfortunate because, like, the, the, there's, there's, there's some great players in that team. And this is, when, they, when, when they're at their best, they can be anyone. We've seen it this season. I mean, they, they, they have a really, really good side there. And I think, look, I know me and Craig are called Meltdown 1 and 2 at times. But look, <laughs> I think it's, we just look at the season we've had. Like, look at the teams that, like, they've they've beat along the way. And, like, they're not a, they're not a bad team. Do you know what I mean? And, like, it's unfortunate that it's, like, the injuries always, always come into at the worst possible time for us. Like, I mean, if you yeah. could get it at the early start of the season, you know, that kind of way where you'd say, you know, like you can get over the line here or there. We're getting it at the worst possible times. It was the same last season. And, like, you know, yeah, I suppose you have to give the players a bit of slack somewhere. That when you see those injuries, you're going to have gaps. And there's, as Martin kind of touched on it as well, there's more work to be done then from players. More work has to be done from Ramsdale. More work has to be done the likes of Parte. Massively miss Xhaka. Um, yeah. Obviously, we conceded ridiculously early, but I think you could see even after that, like you'd say one 0 down to Southampton, you'll pull it back. You're not, you're not going to question it. Like you, you'd feel confident you'd pull it back. Obviously, it's never a given you're going to come back in the game, but it, it it just looked like we were the team that was kind of almost scared, like like we were put under like in, in, like fear into us. And I think it really showed, I think the last three games, if I'm honest, showed the age of the team a hell of a lot. And I think, um, like, I hadn't seen such a difference of age all season. But I think in the last three, kind of three, four matches, I've kind of really seen, like, oh, okay, you can see there's a bit of fear kind of creeping in. And, like, I think, look, you should have, would have cut it. Like, you could say, look, had we held on and got three points at Liverpool, would it that get, gave them, I suppose, a bit of a, a boost to kind of be like, look, you're big enough, you can do yeah. this. Um, but look, look, I think Martin, you hit the nail on the head. Really, look, it's just never given the beat to Hampton. Look, they're, they're they're battling for the bottom, battling to get out of the bottom three. Um, they will cause teams a lot of trouble. I just think, look, a, a lot of things went wrong. 
It's the best way to put it. Um, Ramsdale should n- never, ever make that mistake. And don't get me wrong, he's saved us more times than, than, than he's cost us. But, I mean, like, there was a lot of chaos going into that game based off the last two results. And all that, like, I, whether, I don't know what was said before the game, but just do the simple things right. You're told that from schoolboy football. Do the simple things right. Don't do anything that that's pretty football or trying to be smart about it. Because, like, I can tell you now, it's like, we'll get into Wednesday, I'm sure, in, in a few minutes. But the, the main thing that wins you a title is having a good mentality and being intelligent and not having fear. Go into every game thinking you can beat anyone because you can. Anyone can beat anyone on their day. You need to have a good mentality about you. Yeah. You can't go in there thinking, "Oh, cameras are on. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna do this crazy football." Like it. it, it like I mean, it doesn't work. You see, you, every every time we try to take an extra pass or we try to do something clever in the midfield, we lose the ball. And look, yeah. it, it can cost you like it did on Friday night. But- that, that that pass ended up falling onto Walcott and but can, can I can I just say like uh, and and you, and now you say that you know like and that that's fair enough and I, and I think this is exactly what it is at the moment we have like players who are very young let's just say 20 21 22 you mm-hmm. know like even like you know are more yeah. experienced or whatever is 23 and they never been there the only ones who are who are been in in a, in a run in like that is Sinchenko and and Jesus you know yeah. and even like yeah. i think before the game yeah, like yeah. you know they had a big report about Ramsdale you know how great he was this season how thing is <laughs> and I, I don't i don't know when you were 21 if somebody comes in all of a sudden the attention is on you know you you do go into these games and think you're invincible and you, you say like yeah. look i'm the man like you know i'm going in and then all of a sudden like the big bad premier league is coming and hit you because as i said there is no easy game and they yeah. can't and it's easy for us to say like well you shouldn't underestimate them but obviously they went in there and like you know we said four nil they probably went in and look at southampton we're gonna roll them over and we're gonna get some stuff in and and that's really what it's all about <laughs> And I think that's the big issue what we have, and we just have to be on all the time, and that's it, you know. So, <laughs> um, no. <laughs> no, I had, that was from Ramsdale, Martin. I had to send that love her. There was a... <laughs> <laughs> no, but but it is like you know, like you know, like it's it's kind of it's 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 a strange thing for it. like, and we don't know, like you know, when when you when you're not playing, you know, like and the things they have to do outside yeah. of playing football, you know, and you can see the pressures on because every radio station, every podcast, everybody is talking about them, you know. And if you if you can say like we don't listen to it, maybe Ben White he doesn't watch football, he might not see anything of that. Um, you know, then you know that's kind of it. But and that's the that's the issue. And Man City, exactly. This is where we have to go better next year. We have to buy more because we're not at that level of Man City yet. We don't have anybody to play Saliba. You know, and that's that's why we're not <laughs> where we're supposed to. Look, be. I think no, I agree with you there. But I think look, where my fear is is look, it. Look, we want to win the league, of course, but as a team and the progression as well, like yeah. that mentality has to get better. Like we have to kind of be smarter <laughs> with the ball because if we don't, like we have a massive Champions League coming up next. It season. does. It, it, it will get better, but the problem is we're we're way ahead of the curve, way ahead of the curve. And as I said to you in the pub, is that if you would have said to me at the start of the season with six games to go. We're going to play Man City for a shot at the title and we already qualified for the Champions League. Everybody would have said, you're absolutely cracker. Oh, 100%. And, and, and 100%. you would have taken it, no thing for it. And now that we are at that stage, we say, oh, we have to go there. Last year, we were too early to be in the Champions League. This year, we're too early to have a, a proper shot at the title. And next year, mm. if you buy the more people, you know, if you get a proper replacement for Saliba, if you get another midfielder in, and if you get another striker in, then we really have a chance, you know, to stand up with them. But like City have 400 million on the bench and we don't. And that's the difference between us now. And yeah. we get another year more experience. We get another more more thing for it. And look, I'm I'm not saying I'm happy. Of course I want to win the title. <laughs> you said you were a child. I, like, it's so long ago, like, you know. I was 10 years old. <laughs> yeah. And, and and like yeah. every every yeah. Arsenal yeah. fan wants to have one, but the problem is, yeah. is that, you know, if nobody's expecting it, and now we're really wanting it, and that's the it's like yeah. a big ice cream hanging down in the thing, and you want it, and then you can't get it, you have a meltdown. 
Yeah. I don't mind. Like I don't mind if we fall short the city. Like the, 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 there's a massive gap. No, no, no. Yeah. I kind of lose my head a little bit, and where I kind of, I mean, kind of, I suppose. Borderline meltdown, as, it, as 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 it's called, is <laughs> it's not, it's not a meltdown. Ian. I, I feel like, a donation coming. They're going to say something. They're just on Martin's yeah, point. Cool. Of, I understand Martin's point where he says, you know, it's not expected or anything, but like, you know, circumstances change throughout a season, and now every Arsenal fan wants to win the league. So, you know, if someone has an opinion and you know it seems negative or they're they're giving out, I don't see. I, I don't understand the way. I'm not I'm not saying you, Martin. You know, I don't understand the way people are giving out because that's their view. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. So yeah. whether they're pissed yeah. off or annoyed with how a result or you know how the game is going, they're entitled to say that. You know. Yeah. No, no, and, and look at um, look at this is like we're a free country. Everybody can say what they want, right? And I, I totally understand that. But what I'm saying is like that, and and I think as well as like when you read our WhatsApp groups, you know, like what's been said during the games, you know, like and I'm kind of going back to the Bournemouth game or any other game where people were slaughtered before they even had a chance like to do anything for it. Look, at, we have no influence on what's going to happen there. You know, we are the fans, you know, we can only watch it. It's our own health, you know. As I said, like we have uh, for Wednesday, we have a pacemaker installed downstairs in, in the in <laughs> thing, uh, just, to, just to make sure that nothing is going to happen because it, it, it really has to be a, get a defibrillator in if there's something going to happen. No, look, one way or the other, we don't have any influence on it. But I can just imagine like if the fans are like that, you know, I'm sure like if you're a player of Arsenal, you're as passionate. And Thierry Henry said it, this club at the moment is too passionate. They have mm. too much emotions. And to win the league, you need emotion, obviously, but you also need the experience to put that down and, you know, like bring your your, your game first before you be emotional. And we had too many games this season where we really kind of in the last, like what was it, Villa? Bournemouth, you know, like where we had like last gasp winners and we, 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 the river by the fans went bananas. I can just imagine what it's like for them players, which they didn't expect to be there. And just to, to put this all in, in one thing and then really think about um, how to handle this, that, that's the problem. So if the fans can't handle it, imagine what the players are like. And as you said there, the manager is young as well. So like that's yeah. his first run in, you yeah. know, that's his thing. And, and he can be, you know, he's trying to to put a, a lid on it as good as possible. You're like not to show anything to the outside, not to show anything to Pep, whose mentor it is. You know, yeah. he wants to play the mind games. You know, he wants to be the master. He wants to be like what Pep does. But you know, again, it just doesn't happen in two years. So much has happened in two years in Arsenal, and unfortunately, you know, yeah, of course, if you have a goal and all of a sudden, as you said, it changed, you know, and all of a sudden, yeah, we're looking at this, it is there, we can still, and we can still win it. It's not that we lost it already, yeah. you know, we, there's still a chance there and let's hope we can, but let's just be like, if we don't, we just don't go absolutely bananas and say like, I don't know, Arteta out or I don't know, <laughs> you know, like, like, look, I think, I think, I think, look, if we don't do it, if we don't, if we don't win the league, it's going to be a disappointment. Let's, let's be real. Oh, of yeah. course, but, like, anytime, yeah. like, yeah. I think, I think we, look, expectations change, as Craig said, throughout the season, they do, they absolutely do. And look, we're going to be disappointed one way or another, do you know, that kind of way, like, um, if we don't win the league, whether like you didn't win the league, but you still get top four, and yeah, you can kind of say it's bittersweet, but look, we we're going to have more opportunities than we had this season. But look, the way I look at it is, um, I suppose going back over what we all kind of said is, look, the last three results weren't where we at the best. But I look back at last season, I kind of think I said it in the group chat today, when we lost Newcastle last year, all the players yeah. dropped, and there was there was no there was no second chance. There was no no way to put things right. There was no way to kind of be like, well, look, can we go out on a high? If we're gonna if we're gonna if we're if we're, if we're gonna if we're gonna lose this, lose it with pride intact. And look, that's all we're asking for against City. Look, it's never a given we're going to go to City and we're going to win. It's a massive, massive task. It's a massive ask. Yeah. But go there, give the performance of their lives. If they go out there and, you know, we're narrowly beaten, fair enough. We get to get a draw. It's all to play for. If we win, we're st it's still in our hands. There's such a massive chance that they can make up for the last three results. They didn't didn't have that opportunity last year. So yeah. I'm hoping, look, they have that time. They know the they know the mistakes they've made. Look, it could be a blessing in disguise 
the, what happened against Southampton because they were so probably cocky and confident going into that game that they thought that they just turn up and get three points. And they know now that they're like, okay, we need to have this stronger mentality. We need to, we need to think about the passes we're making. The positions that Craig mentioned are back four. If you have a back five, you know, where's our weak points? Where are we going to, where are we likely to make these mistakes? It's good that we made those mistakes now because look, we have a chance to put it right now. Do you know, if we did it against City, it's all over. Better to do it against Southampton than do it against City. Do you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, look, we're, as, as Martin said, and what's been pointed out, like every fan has a right to be excited this season. We've well overachieved, but we're a young side that doesn't know, you know, that doesn't know the situation we're in. At, you know, this is all new to these players still, you know, and... You know, yeah. like City, City only. See, the, the difference with City is they come good in the last third of the season because they've been there. You know, they, yeah. they, they, they've an extra gear that you don't see in the first 19 games of the season. But all of a sudden, there's this switch that goes on. Right, lads, this is where well, we... As I said, and, and plus they have yeah. another eight first team players, you know, they can bring on yeah. whenever they like, you know. And, and that's yeah. what we don't yeah. have yet. And yeah. let's hope we can yes, get it in yeah. the next couple yeah. of... Transfer windows. Transfer yeah. windows, you know. But there is yeah, look, a serial winners though. That's the, that's that's the scary thing. That, like every yeah, single player in there knows what it is to win things. Do you know? They, and, do you know what they have to do? You know, it's yeah, drilled they're, into. They're, them. They're a state-run club, yeah. you know. How can you compete with that? Yeah. 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 Uh, well, in fairness, Craig, as well, we're a well-run club now. Is you know the last two years. No, it's, it's state-run. State. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah they, well, yeah, it's hard to compete, isn't it, when you've got billions. Coming in every year, isn't it? And I, I can, then there's another team as well that's coming into. I guarantee the next year or two, there's another team that's going to be in that fall, Newcastle. They're, 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 they're already there. <laughs> yeah, and that it's no longer a top four. That's big, that's the only. I have yeah. to say that's the only thing what kind of scares me a bit. Like, so, yeah. and again, I'm thinking it's like we're looking back at the the yeah. the season when Leicester won the title. It's kind of like. We should have won that title. We're yeah. well capable of winning it, you know. And if we don't win it this year, next year is not going to be easier no. because there's so many, you know, like United probably going to get a shitload of money if they're going to be sold. Um, yeah. Newcastle are already there. You know, there's a lot of clubs, you know, like they're just like Chelsea probably going to, you know, get another three managers and, and another 500 million of, of players <laughs> and then they might come good. Um, <laughs> but that's the, that's the you just never know. That's yeah. why I think this maybe if we don't win this year hurts so much. Because we've been in control of the league for so long as well, haven't we, Craig? Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. as well, Johnny. But like, just as Martin's telling, like you know, them teams are going to improve. I'm sure Arsenal will improve as well. Yeah. But when you're up against clubs that have a lot, well, not even a lot more money, there was that are going to spend a lot more than us. You know, it, it's very hard to compete, and you know we're only competing, I think, now because of the young players that we've bought. You know, it's not we're, we don't have ready-made players now at the moment. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Maybe in the summer, if we go and buy like you know two or three proven players, it'll improve the squad. But uh, there's just, just just there's just such an opportunity there. You yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. big time. Yeah. Um. And it's a hard thing to win the Premier League. It's 38 games, like you know, and you have to be on for every single one of them. And as game, I said, yeah. it's it's the it's the hardest part to 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 win this this kind yeah. of league. And yeah. yeah, like look at we, we look at. I don't want to think about next year until you know, like till till Wednesday or like even the end of the after the Wolves game, you know. Then we can start thinking about it. But um, yeah. I'm just think, I'm just looking ahead and said, look, if you look at other teams, the way they they strengthen and you know, like what they can do, and Arsenal can do a lot of things as well, which we have shown in the last year. But yeah, of course, it's a it's a it's a chance missed. But as I said, we're not there yet, so we can think about that when when the last ball yeah. is <laughs> being kicked, you know, in, in <laughs> against Wolves in the Emirates, and then we can go on and say like either we watch the parade or we just fucking go home again. Oh, yeah. sorry about the swearing. I have to beat the. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> all, all, all swearing is welcome once the bell is pressed. <laughs> um, I, I think we've said enough there. I think we move on to the big one. Yeah. I think on um, Wednesday night, it's uh, of course. Manchester City away. It's the third match of the trilogy now from this season. Um, Forsen was, of course, in the fourth round of the cup. 1-0, Nathan Aki. Uh, I thought we'd done quite all right in that game, being honest. 
Um, I think Toby probably might even deserve to have won the cup game. You know that you know City, they were okay in the game, but in that last two months they've just become <laughs> the juggernaut that we all believed that they would be. Um, and then the last game we played was um, of course the fifteenth of February. Aside from that, getting flowers and chocolates on Valentine's night, this really rubbed it in as a bad <laughs> week overall. Uh, sack, sack a penalty for us, and in the first forty-five minutes, I tell we done really well. Uh, Tommy Asio made it just unfortunate how he didn't realise De Bruyne was that fast behind him, but um, a great finish by De Bruyne. Um, and Greedish and Hannon scored in the second half. Um, I thought uh, hand and heart. I thought we deserved a draw in that game. I thought we thought we did really well. In fairness, you know, and any time we played City. If we've been beaten, which we have in most of the games Arteta has played against Guardiola, we've given a good account of ourselves and a lot of them, you know, and there's, there's a lot you can take from the game. So, um, as it stands, uh, we played 32 with 75 points. City have 30, have played, sorry, have played 30 with uh, 70 points, two games in hand, which is big for them. Um, but with Madrid in the semi-finals of the Champions League, their run in is is a bit tougher as well. They've a lot of games coming up in a small about what two months, guess yeah. or so. So, yes. um, I, I, hand and heart. If I'm being honest now, prediction wise, um, I, I can see City beat us. You know, I just think they've reached another level. You know, Haaland is the man to stop, and I can't see Gabriel or holding stopping him. I I think. I think 3 0 maybe City. I can't see us getting anything from it. Um, myself, I think they're just on another level at the moment, you know. Um, I think any realistic Arsenal fan probably might say the same, a draw at best. But um, you never know. Um, I come to Ian. You're, well, what, how do you see the game going yourself, Ian? Um, I don't think it's going to be like I, I get where you're coming from with the last three results. So you could say 3 0. Yeah, you could, th- you could think that. I actually think, look, that you could see it, right? I mean, Okay, the Southampton result wasn't wasn't what we wanted, but you could see the fight in the players. Yeah, you could see that there was that bit of an annoyance and that bit of a kind of you know, I suppose almost sort of wanting to kind of prove that they're still wanting this. I think if they can bring the last ten minutes and play that last ten minutes uh, from Friday for the whole ninety against City, I think we can take something from this. Like I I I, I I'm gonna be honest and think that look I think it's a massive ass to go there and win yeah, yeah, yeah. My, 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 my heart says yes we'll win 2-1 or possibly 1-0 um, being real honest and using my head I think it'll be one all. I think if, if we can score first it'll be the massive massive thing Yeah. I think if we score first and we can just kind of shut up shop as such have a back five as Craig said and just absolutely watch every single pass that we make, and just don't get caught in the counter attack. I think we can, we can, we can snatch a point. But if we go there and try and match them pace for pace, we're gonna get hockeyed. So I, I I'm gonna say, look, it would be one all or uh, one nil to Arsenal. Um, Craig, where do you see the jewels being lost and won in that game? Um, look. <laughs> I, think this game, I think this game and the result probably stems on if we play Rob Holden or not that's just my opinion yeah. it depends on who plays in the half because uh, you know I think if he just goes with what we know with the kind of normal lineup the last two or three games I can see City kind of smashing us 3-1 yeah. you know I just don't see how we compete with Haaland against Rob Holden he, yeah. he didn't do great against him in the FA Cup you know, he tried to get tied to him and he done, done the same last year against Son and he got sent off. So that's my worry there in t- terms of big games. I don't think he copes with the pressure well. Um, if we go to a back five, you know, if you, if you play as, you know, maybe Roy, Gabriel and Tierney in the back three, with, you know, maybe Zinchenko on the right side or the left side and you can maybe play Saka then, Party, Jack Odegaard in the three and maybe Martinelli, um, Martinelli and Jesus up front then. I think we, we could counter them, you know, and I think I think we could we're well capable of nickel and one, one all. I think realistically, if we're gonna possibly win the league from here, we need to get a result. If they beat us, I think it's over. Mentality wise, City will just power on 
as they are. If we even get a draw here, you know, City might start to say, these aren't going away, you know, and they might start to just worry about that Champions League instead of the Premier League. That's just, you know, me living in hope yeah. saying that. But, yeah. like, look, you know, I'm trying to be realistic here. I just, I don't think he's going to go to back five. I think he'll be, I don't know if you want to call it stubborn or not. I think he'll go to, I think he'll say, play the exact same team and hope they prove him wrong. But if he does go at that team, I think it's going to be 3 1 City. I can't see anything from the game. If we go to a back five, if we kind of, you know, play different tactics than we have the last two or three games, I think we're definitely capable of getting the draw. Um, but it just, I really think a lot of this result stems on if Holden played or not. And I'm not sure if he's agreeing or not, but that's just, I think a lot of Arsenal fans might yeah. agree with me. Would you throw Keywar in there? Like, you no, know, it's, 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 it's not being mentioned. And like, no. to be honest, like when I see that, I'm like, that's taking risks to a whole new level. Like, uh, Realistically, yeah, he's struggling. I wouldn't when he think he was. Yeah, I, no, I, I, he's I, think, not the answer. I think, I think Saka, rifle, um, right wing back, white, Gabriel in the center, Tierney left center half, Zinchenko is the most secure defense we're going to have or get from the yeah. from what from the options we have. I think, yeah, yeah. party jacket, yeah. Odegaard in the midfield three, and play take your pick then from Martinelli, um, Jesus or Trossard. Yeah, yeah. No. that's a strong, that's yeah. a very strong team, I, I, it, and, and it's a team set up the counter. Yeah, you know? yeah. I think actually, yeah. I think yeah. if you could show there, Ben White and Gabrielle both centre backs actually wouldn't be a bad show, Craig. Yeah, well, you ben, know, that's Ben White's normal, you know, like uh, role. And he's and, and, and he's again. the pace, the match, Haaland and his friends. Yeah, you know as well. You know, uh, sorry, yeah. Martin, going to you and, and me. I'm, well, how yeah. do you see the game? Go ahead. <clears throat> Well, we, we're just talking about formations, like, and I just want to give a shout out to Papa yeah. uh, Gunnery because he was uh, suggesting to, <laughs> to 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 play Turner. Before you even said this, Martin, he walked past going, "Tell them it's gonna be one nil to the Arsenal." <laughs> shout, shout out to Papa Gunnery because he oh, wants to play. He, he wants to play Turner in goal on 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 Wednesday, so. After after Ramsdale kicked the ball to Alcatraz, Mr. Connery himself, <laughs> and, I, and I said to him, "You don't even get into the podcast before you get your P forty five Yeah. <laughs> now, he's lucky. but look, he, he's he's very lucky. Yeah, he's missing all the fun. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, and I think it's. I'm just thinking, like, exactly what um, what Craig said. Like, I think that's that would be a very, very good solution because, yeah. um, you know, to play Tierney, Gabriel, because Tierney plays that for Scotland anyway, a bit more inside than than normally. He plays in the back three, I think, or pack five with Scotland sometimes. So White would play his normal role, what he played before. He was yeah. pushed out to the right. Um, the problem what we have is not only that we lost Saliba, we also lost Tomiyasu, who can play yeah. on either side, you know. And again, like we we just like 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 last year, I think we 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 <laughs> like 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 last year we 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 got cancelled out on 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 bloody defenders, not on the strikers, you know. But look, it's gonna be one of these games where if if we concede like as early as we did against Southampton, it's gonna be a nightmare. Um, if we can keep the game open. Long enough, you know, and 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 keep the ball and and give them a game, and then look, you just never know. <laughs> With your heart, yeah, you obviously, obviously, like you want you want to win. I can't see it. I I, I think a draw is as much as we can get out of that. Um, and I, and I don't think that would be the worst. That's that's what I think. Um, if we can get anything a, a draw, and as you said, um, um, Jonathan. They have so many games to play, and once they play against Real Madrid, they really need to, you know, probably concentrate a bit more, and they might draw points there as well. So I'm going for a, a one-all draw or a two-all draw, and let's see how it goes. I think that another player to stop for City, and he kind of goes on notice, is um, Riyad Mahrez. Yeah, you know, he goes about his business very, you know, he's a top player, but he, he seems to just drift in games. And like we saw against Sheffield United, he can come up with a hat trick, but he's been doing that a lot this season. You know, he, he kind of picks his games when to perform his, at his best. And I think this could be another one, you know, and like just every player city is hard to mark, you know, like they're just, Arteta that's knows the problem himself. With the yeah. you, you, they've yeah, just quality, you haven't they? To, yeah. yeah, they just have quality, quality they can bring, yeah. like Aki is out now, like, you know, they're going to yeah. have a replacement for him. 
there's not even like uh, you know a, a thought about that he's not going to play. But, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. The only thing I would say, the only thing I would say is like when you see the way City played against Bayern uh, in Champions League and just games that they played, like the games against Sheffield in the FA Cup. Yes, they won three 0 and they beat Bayern over two leg quite comfortably. The thing is that I've noticed is you're going to get chances and City's goalkeeper is not the best when it comes to chances uh, thrown at them. Like, yeah. the, the, like there is a capability of getting goals there as, as much as they can score five or six yeah. goals quite easy. It's like they're, they're going to get chances. It's not as if it's going to be like trying to fight a brick wall of a City defence. Like it's definitely not going to be that kind of game. We're going to get chances. It's just a question of how much we can kind of Keep the line away from the door. <laughs> Not going away. Like, but I yeah, think yeah. definitely will get chances. Yeah. Um. Just apologies there. That, um. <laughs> Craig went after. He was yeah. just having a mini meltdown. No listening to our predictions. <laughs> <laughs> um. No. Yeah. Um. It's going to be. Look. It's going to be a great game, isn't it? It's eight o'clock Wednesday night. Yeah. Uh, BT Sports. Um. All eyes on that game. So it's like a, it's really like a cup final to us, isn't it? That game, we have to get something from it, or it's probably all, all but over. But oh, I, 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 I think I think as well yeah. with, with the I think the pressure is on. It's pressure is on City now to keep winning, you know. So I think yeah. in you know, in a way, I think the well, pressure's made. You know, because everyone's written off. Yeah, it's a must win for City, and it's a yeah. do not lose for us. That's yeah. the way we're going into it. Do you know that kind of way? And they need to be playing that game as that. Whatever you do, go to obviously you're going in to win the game, but whatever you do, do not lose the game. Because if we yeah. go out there with a draw, yeah, you know, technically it's in City's hands, but there's all to play for. If we lose it, it's we're at what? We're needing City to realistically no, te- lose te- the game. technically if we draw, it's still in our hands, no? Uh, no well, we'd be uh, five no. points ahead no. and they'd have two games in hand. So if yeah. they won them both, they'd be yeah. a point ahead. Yeah, 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 those, yeah. Okay. those games in hand are Versus City, certainly that's uh, what one is West Ham at home, and you take it that West Ham probably be safe by then. But the other game is Brighton away, and that would be what that's an interesting one because Brighton are still um, in contention for Europe. So yeah, I would I mean, love to uh, pull them away that they have at the weekend after us. That's yeah, not a, it's not a given either. Yeah, yeah, Ever, yeah. Everton, Everton away, they're going to be fighting for a relegation, they yeah, don't want to go down. Uh, Brentford away as well. Last game. Brentford, the, the last yeah. two games for them, like a hard games, like Chelsea. Brighton and Brentford. You know, we have to play Chelsea as well. Look, it, yeah, it could it's... be like, you know, we, we're winning in, in the Etihad and then we're going to go beaten by fucking Chelsea. You know, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the way it's going to go. <laughs> I like your optimism, Martin, as always. <laughs> um, our games are so all going well. We'll hammer City and the league be all but wrapped up by then. But uh, we have Chelsea, which is Tuesday week, May the 2nd. It was meant to be for this Saturday. Um, King Charles. Yeah, all hail King Charles. <laughs> um, we have uh, he better fucking we better fucking win in the shoes here. It had to be for strong repercussions there. <laughs> um, P forty five for Charles. <laughs> there be no there be no invites with uh, our very own um, Michael D. <laughs> um, I hope he brings a new dog over. His dog died there. <laughs> um, Newcastle away. Sorry, May the seventh. That's another big one because they're coming into um, the really next good three games game. are going to be massive. Yeah, I think Brighton at home is another tough. Yeah, it looks farthest away. They're fighting for relegation and Wolves hopefully be saved. But like, look what they done to Liverpool. They gave them the frightener in the last day as well. Yeah, um, <laughs> and hey, Mickey D. Yeah. How do you do that? <laughs> it's Papa Jesus Gunnery from here on in. <laughs> um, I have to say, we'd be all saying prayers for your old lad in on Wednesday night. I'd become. Oh, he'll need them. He'll need them. <laughs> Gabriel. Well, I, I, tell you, I tell you, I tell you, talking about praying, like when he. Uh, <laughs> When he got kicked down after they scored the two goals and it was a three on and he got kicked down the yeah. stairs, he came back up and the only way he was, he was kneeling in front of the screen, praying for the court. <laughs> so, much so, the, so, so much so the bar staff are like, you can't do that. He's like, I'll, I'll get up off the ground when the fork goes in. I said, you'll be here all fucking night. You can't be praying uh, here. This is uh, uh, it's not a place of, of, of praying here. Of worship. Anyway, yeah. of worship. <laughs> the, only, yeah. the only worship uh. is at the bar when you're getting free drink. Um, <laughs> and, and that's very unlikely in the river bar. <laughs> well, I'll um, tell you now for Wednesday, if I light any more candles in my house on Wednesday night, the house is going to go on fire. 
<laughs> All hail the gunnery household. <laughs> God has arisen. Uh, enough, I'm not putting the fire brigade bill, though. <laughs> Oh, now, well, I'll tell you one thing, if Jesus doesn't <laughs> score, right, so help me God. <laughs> that is Jesus' shoes, Frank, that night. Um, um, yeah, that game is um, Wednesday, of course, and we'll be doing a special show on Thursday as well. Uh, myself, Eamon, Ozzy and uh, John Meany will be here for that one. Um, Santa Coins, lads. Um, I'm not too sure, Martin. Are they gone now? The clock and coiners are still at some of I don't know. Like, uh, what I'm gonna yeah. do is that there is a, a special discount code which we can put into HS the description of the HS15. I don't know if they're all gone because it is a limited uh, edition yeah. for the Senate coin, um, of the clock end, which looks really, really good. So I'm yeah. waiting for mine to come. Yeah. Um, yeah, if they're still there, HS15. Uh, put it into the thing. I'm gonna leave the link in where they can order it and uh, put a picture in of it as well. Um, I know uh, the heirs of women, Martin, yesterday, uh, yeah. two, two all against Wolfsburg. Good result. They were 2 0 down, weren't they, as well? Yeah, like a, <laughs> yeah. I just said, like, what is it with Arsenal going 2 0 down? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you know, and then, then like getting back in control, like, it's just like, it rains just, of course. <laughs> I, I just think, I just think the, there's still some uh prime cameras from Amazon left in the thing and making a second season or something. I, yeah, I don't know. Be, yeah. If someone has a voodoo doll of Arsenal, right? Because not only have we have this habit of a two goal lead being going, the poor women came back, were on their plane back to London, and the plane caught fire. Oh, oh my God. Christ. Like the engine caught fire as they were taken off, had to take them off the plane onto another plane. I'm like, so not only is results not going their way, they're trying to kill our players. So I'm like, what is going on? That's a new I mean, proper gunnery intervention there. Uh, <laughs> Save our talking, team. <laughs> ta- talking about like you know, like bad luck and uh, like you know, like players getting injured. This is now the the third one out. Williamson is out now with an ACL as well, and that's uh, definitely her World Cup gone. Um, yeah, so the the line is so common in women there, doesn't it? Just three ACLs now, isn't it? We've had yeah, like and especially yeah. me and, yeah. and we meet him and now Mead, like Williamson, yeah. you know. So he's quite it's... lucky as well from an Irish point of view. The Katie McCabe's injury yeah. wasn't as good as we and, and the way the way yeah. she plays as well. She's very you know yeah. she's not afraid. To, she's you know she's kind of risky going into tax, but she's yeah she kind yeah. of escapes injury quite well, doesn't she? Yeah? I, I don't yeah, I don't think Katie really has well. an ACL. Does she not know? So, yeah, well, actually, yeah. Yeah. she won't even come on our podcast. Mm. Um, Katie, Katie, are you listening? Yeah. Donation to the club. yeah. To no, but like, look, they have all the chance, and I'm actually looking into it. As I said, I'm I'm in London on Saturday, Sunday, and I'm coming yeah. back for it you on know, Monday. Yeah. Um, and we had a few requests, maybe to to show the the women's uh, Champions League game in the River Bar. Because yeah. I think it's on a quarter to six. The only problem is, I'm not sure if this is anywhere on television. Does anybody know if it's on television or is it only Dazen. on YouTube? Doesn't. Is it doesn't? Yeah. Yeah. On oh, the yeah. telly as well. All right, guys. So we might yeah. we might have a look if we can get yeah. that on the on the TV in the River Bar because I think it would be a good turnout as well. It would be yeah. May Bank Holiday. I should yeah. be able to get a link for you, Martin. I'll, I'll try to get it tomorrow and see if it doesn't work. If it does, I'll uh, yeah. Send it on to you. Because I mean, so far I watched all the games on YouTube, but like if it's on Dazzle, it should be actually, on, on there's the channel one, as well. Martin, you wave it com. Actually, I think it's on as well. But is that a, a, a television station? I think it is, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I think we, Craig, we... Craig, Craig told me it was, but he did say, <laughs> he did say he went for it last Friday, so that was probably made up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think I think it's got I think TV are showing the Arsenal games from now on as well. <laughs> so frustrating. <laughs> I think Craig walked into a P45 tonight. <laughs> Craig, it's all right. I'm one of the seven of them already. Yeah. I've actually run out of paper at this stage in the print. <laughs> Um, is there uh, anything else, um, lads, uh, Craig or Ian, Arsenal related or anything you'd like to mention? Yeah, I, I just want to say as well, uh, best of luck to the U team in the cup final to come. Yeah, yeah. here, here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'd be nice for Jack Wilshire as well. I mean, he's had such an unfortunate career, bless him. Like, he deserves to kind of have, you know, a good part or good, like some good stint to his career, like, you know, yeah. uh, and to manage them to a cup final victory would be brilliant for him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, because that game is on the Saturday evening, isn't it? No, it's um, actually Wednesday. No, it's tomorrow, I think, oh, is it? Uh, is it not Saturday, no, no? No, it's on the 20... What day is it? It's on Wednesday, no? No, no. Tomorrow. it's on the 29th. 
Is it? No, they, they couldn't have a game in the, in the Emirates on, on the evening. Uh-huh. It doesn't matter which one it is. So oh, they, they, did, they, they did change tomorrow? that, and I think... Is it tomorrow? Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. it's Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> As you can see, the research that goes into this show before. No, no, no. A lot of people on Facebook earlier on today um, buying tickets that, for That should show. be a good set. That yeah. should be a good crowd, actually, at that, I reckon. You know, it being a no final, yeah. Like, as far as I know, I could be wrong. I'll check it out anyway, but I think Arsenal.com will be showing coverage of that for free, as far as I know. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay, yeah, that's... Um, yeah, here best of luck to um Jack Wilcher. Yeah, he's doing a super job there. Uh, oh, and a lot, a lot of good youngsters as well. I was looking at them against City, they really played well that night. Yeah, um, anything else, Martin, you'd like mentioned on the show? No, tickets I don't know. Ticket, well, tickets, forget about tickets, like that's <laughs> there just you like go. one of the, the things. <laughs> <for ourselves. laughs> uh, but there's uh, actually one, one re- yeah, one report came out today, and I asked on the pages about discrimination so that we. As a, a, probably a lot of people heard, like 31 season ticket holders got banned yeah. this mm-hmm. season from, you know, for, you know, like uh, online abuse or in stadium, like so, like death threats, homophobia, anti Semitism, and all kind of stuff. So the club is cracking down on this. Um, we can see a few results of this now. Like it's an interesting, like, read on, on the on the arsenal.com uh, page about it. Um, it's good to see that they do something about it. And yeah. look, if there might be some tickets. Spare because of that, like no more to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hope they they have, they're trying to bring out this other well. stuff as well. So, uh, they're trying to do a ballot. Did you yeah. see those ballots for crazy for tickets then next year? Yeah, yeah. so basically, rather, wait, rather than have your a month before if you're a red member or two months before if you're a silver, you'll just go into this ballot and you'll say, for example, right, how many memberships do you have? You have two memberships. And they'll you you'll get two chances of getting tickets, but like it'll be an open ballot. There won't be like a queue system where you go in and select your seats. It'll just be a ballot to get into the queue as such. Yeah, that sounds well, yeah. Look, hey, look, they, they, uh... they have definitely <laughs> looked into something. You know, like what they're gonna do. As I said, we, we 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 I think I don't know if we talked about this before. The the ticketing system is like twelve years old, um, and they never had any need to really make something better than that because they never had the problem to sell tickets <laughs> so so yeah. that was the that was the problem mm-hmm. like no this season is unprecedented like the yeah. same way as it is for us in the club you know that we couldn't take any more members after after november because of that um <laughs> and like look at we we just all have to get on with it you know like and, and try to figure out but it just shows you that the technology is completely outdated you know like that uh, the ticketing system the way it works at the moment that you can just scan and co- photocopy a barcode and then whoever yeah. comes in first is in first that just can does not make sense no, it doesn't, so it doesn't make any sense yeah no because it could say and, you could say it says your tickets go on sale at 10 o'clock but if you're not online from eight o'clock you don't get them like it just, yeah. no no and that and that's that's a that's another thing that's that's a that's a mystery and that's not a mystery but they, they were talking about this that even if you be online at seven o'clock or six o'clock in the morning and you're in the, you, you you're in the queue yeah, the, the system will then take half an hour before the, the ticket sale goes on. It will just kick everybody out, and then whoever is at the queues first at that point is going to get the tickets. And that's the problem what they have at the moment. So it's you like can be queuing. To, honestly, God, like our, trying to get Arsenal tickets is like trying to arrange a drug deal. You need about six devices on you, all signed into into the same queue. Like, are you okay, I don't, I, I don't know where you get your drugs, but like, the, believe me, it's easier to get <laughs> they drugs. They certainly than don't. <laughs> <laughs> not in that category. We won't, we won't mention where Mark gets any of that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, good to know, good to know that you <laughs> No, I'm just, yeah, just, just, just having a look at this, you know? No. It, you know but like, look, it, 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 is, it is a crazy situation, you know? And, and as I said, for me, the, the worst thing is like what they're doing at the moment, you know, that they, that they really don't have any, any respect of anybody when they, you know, yeah. Uh, have to book tickets or like you know accommodation when they fly over and 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 that's yeah. just the, the the biggest issue. Um, the for, Chelsea for them, one was a disgrace because they had all oh, these crazy ones before though because they changed the ones before. Am I right in saying that? They, 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 well, the times change anyway, but we are we are unfortunately we have this problem that we have to wait six to eight weeks before mm-hmm. to even figure out you know when are they playing because of television rights and it's that's the biggest problem. It's the one yeah. who give that money, you know, that they say, well, look at this, nothing to do with it because. I don't know how much policing was really an issue for this 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 fixture. Yeah, um, seemingly, yeah, really, 
yeah. seemingly they said they should have put it on a three o'clock. They could have played it on a Saturday three o'clock, but then yeah. they wouldn't have got the television for it. And and you know, but <laughs> look, uh, it's just I'm I'm sure there's about ten thousand people coming to every single game, you know, from somewhere outside of the UK. Um, oh, yeah. And and especially games like a half five, you you have to book a, a hotel to to stay yeah. over because otherwise you'll never get home. Uh, and just to to basically just push this away, it's it's disgraceful. Um, but that's unfortunate. That's what we have to do. And and yeah, um, what can you do? Yeah, to be honest, yeah, tickets are almost at a premium now, aren't they? And it's the, oh, the, yeah. the, more, the more we do well, the hard it's not. But look, it's great to see you still. Well, if because... anyone's looking for tickets for the Wolves game, <laughs> message Jonathan Giles on any pla- any social media platform. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it, it, I tell you, it, if you put, you, you can feel free to put any donation in and any prediction. But um, in terms yeah. of getting tickets, you can fuck off. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, <laughs> no uh, I'd, I'd like, uh, as always, uh, my guest tonight, um, <clears throat> Martin Stumble, um, formerly Ralph Hudson Hotel. Uh, you had a great season this year. Best of luck to you next year. <laughs> uh, Ian uh, Papa St. John Gunnery. <laughs> 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 and Craig, I'm not having a meltdown towards the evening, Smith. <laughs> um, all donations welcome from all three is uh, after uh, 10 p.m. Wednesday evening. <laughs> um, <laughs> If you want to come into the River Bar on Wednesday, come in early because seats are as much as a premium yeah. as tickets are at the Emirates yeah. at the moment. So <laughs> the, there will be a few surprises where we we'll probably do a, a little raffle for the correct score. <laughs> so uh, after Wednesday night, if we lose, you can have all the seats in the ward for the last. Even the dogs from the street will be welcomed in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I'd like to, I'd like to uh, thank our sponsor Bannon Sports Direct as always for uh, sponsors you saw the jersey from Craig uh, earlier on really good stuff yeah. there honest. Uh, we thank yeah. them uh, check out justarsenal.com uh, Pat McLaughlin thanks very much for putting us on their page as always um, Beyond the Last Man should be back soon enough uh, with Martin um, and always catch our show on the Dublin YouTube channel Um Spotify, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok and Facebook. I'll be back Thursday, but for this long show this evening, uh, thanks for everyone for viewing uh, and we'll see you again on um, Thursday. Cheers, lads. Have a good right, week. Thanks. Have a good week. Come on, the Gunas. Come on. <laughs> <Good night. laughs>